So in this tutorial we're going to show you how you can combine two terrain fractals to make uh, a mixed uh, a mixed fractal inside a blender node. So what we're going to do is just create your procedural terrain. I already have one created here due to time constraints with YouTube. I'm going to keep it pretty much short and to the point. So you create your procedural terrain by clicking on this button. It'll appear over here. Uh, you can double click on this. I'll take it a second for it to load. And in here, you uh, will have the formation of your terrain. Um, right here, yours will look a lot different than this uh, to begin with. Over here, you want to right click on, you want to go to the procedural tab right here. You should have the uh, circle right here, the fractal. Go ahead and right click on that and click on edit function. Inside here, you're going to start out with just one fractal. Uh, if you're in view 9, you'll have the multiplication constant node right here. If you want to get what I have, go ahead and copy these down. I changed the multiply by 128 to 200, so I raised it. And then in here, you can copy all of these. Uh, basically, you want to play with the meta scale, the largest feature, and your first fractal uh, to get what you want, what you visually want over here. Uh, play with the roughness, gain all of these, play with them all, and uh, uh, play around with it, see what you want, experiment. Uh, and after you got what you want, click on the linking line right here that links it from here, from the fractal, down to the altitude. And uh, click on that, just like this. It'll highlight like that. And then you want to click on the blender right here. And you'll see it'll add a blender. Um, I don't need that, so I'm going to delete it. And then you will have a blender here. After you do that, you want to add another uh, fractal noise node, which will be this one right here. You don't want just the noise node, you want the fractal right here. And then you can change this, you can change these any kind of fractal you want. Uh, but I'm going to use the terrain fractal. And make sure I didn't change anything over here. I did. Alright, that's that's bad. Uh, but after you get what you want over here over here and you have everything over here, you want to create another fractal. <clears throat> you click anywhere click add fractal and it'll just do this it'll automatically link it to the seed and then you want to link the blender so if I get rid of this you want to link the blender with this other line right here it's kinda small you want to link it to there to the altitude and then here you want to play with it till you get what you want over here as well and usually in the second fractal you would raise the smallest feature uh, unless you have, know exactly what you want to go for uh, but you do want to raise that or keep it down low uh, to where you have enough detail that you need. And after you get what you want over here, I'm just going to show you what I have. And it does take a long time for me to load this because I have the resolution set to 1024 by 1024. And you don't really need it that high when you're working with uh, fractals. I only raise it that high so I have a better detail on what I'm creating. Um, but after you link it to the altitude right here, uh, you play with the f you play with the fun uh, the function. Uh, over here and then you can do whatever you want after that like you can go in here and then add a custom dependency and then link it to uh, here to the rough areas and that way you can distribute uh, materials to the rough areas so you have a, a more realistic distribution uh, you can do that you can link it to that one as well so if we just get rid of this uh, you can link it to that one rough areas and you, you're not limited by anything when you're doing this. So, And then after you get that, you can come down here. If you're not getting exactly what you want, you can come down here and tweak the ratio right here. And you can also change the combination mode to any of these. Um, you get different effects for each one. Um, subtract and multiply, I've noticed that it gets more rounded and curvy, uh, kind of like a billowy effect. So you just play with them. I'm just going to do a simple blend on these. And I set the ratio to about 2 point, or 0.23. So it's leaning towards more this fractal right here than this one, or this one, but uh, you get the you get the gist. You just want to blend them together until you get what you want. <clears throat> I'm gonna link that back up, and then I threw on a filter, and I created my own filter. So if you just double click on, or not double click, but if you right click on it, go to Edit Filter, it's just gonna pop up with a list right here that I don't need edit filter all I did was put in one one node right here 
right in the middle, right above the point zero, and I just crunched it in, uh, gave it a little bit more contrast, crunched it in, and I actually lowered this a little bit right here, the height. I lowered that a little bit, so it made the ridges pop up more, and it made it so it smoothed in to the ridge a little bit more. Uh, that's what that will do. That's what I did. Right here, I just added the filter by clicking onto this and then clicking Add Filter. Very simple. Uh, and then you can actually just load pre-made filters or you can play around with it, whichever one you want. And here you have different types of filters that you can play with. Just be aware that the more you play with these, the more your train will change. Uh, if you ever get to what you don't like, you can always just delete the filter or just go back to the regular filter and give it the linear filter where it's just a straight diagonal line from corner to corner. And that should fix the problem. I'm going to cancel all those because I liked what I had before. When you get out here, you'll if you got what you like, you'll probably turn out with something like this, where it looks more like a terrain and not like <clears throat> little bumps and jaggies and spikes. So uh, that's what I got, and I'm pretty happy with it. There's a lot of detail even down here in the lower areas. So then after you're done with that, you can just go ahead and click OK. I'm just going to click X because I already have what I like. And then when you have what you like, you can go in here and just add any type of material you want. I added the gray, the gray brown rock. It's just uh, uh, this, and I lightened it a little bit. I gave it, or I darkened it, uh, and made it a little bit more brown. But you can add any type of rock you want, or any kind of material that you have. So you're pretty much not limited to anything. Let's just change this to something a little bit more uh, chipped. It looks good. Let's do chipped. And then with with that, I just added a mixed material. Uh, and I added snow and I displaced it or distributed it and I brought the influence of the altitude all the way up and the influence of slope all the way up and I just kept it by default so I did was raise these and I that's what I got and I'm just gonna do a preview render and you'll see what I have here Alright, and that's looking pretty good. Um, I do like the distribution of the materials, and the terrain itself looks pretty good. Uh, I think we're good for a final render. And be aware if your system is running really slow, uh, really old hardware, you don't have very good hardware or anything like that. Mixing procedural terrains together can make it really hard on your system, and the final renders come out really good you get really cool uh, terrain types but it does take a little bit longer to render everything out so let's just make sure I have everything here okay and then just render it and this always pops up but um, I just want to say yes because I like the lens glare effect I think it's really cool alright yeah and I like the way that turned out it looks really rocky it looks really good I like the displacement of the I always say displacement, but distribution of the material. The atmosphere could be worked on a little bit, maybe add some really nice clouds, bring up the uh, the quality a little bit. So these, I actually have some uh, sun rays or the shadows from the mountains right here hit from the sun for coming this way. It's leaving some shadow right here in the air and it's really grainy, but overall that does look pretty good and decent. So um, if you play with it a little bit more, this took me about 30 minutes to make. It wasn't very hard. It was pretty simple. The longest time is just figuring out what you want and what you're going for. And then once you have what you want, um, it's really simple to go from there. Uh, everything you can do just as easily and it looks just as good as anything else in view. Uh, and don't be afraid to use the function editor. Just go in there and play around a little bit. It's really not that bad. I mean, it has a bad rap for that, but it's, it's really not. And the best way to learn is to go in there and experiment on your own. Uh, but if you guys have any questions or anything like that, just give me a holler. You can leave a comment. Um, you can actually do a video response. I don't care what you guys do. But if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask. And if, even if you have critiques or anything like that, go ahead. So uh, this is pretty simple. I'll just go through it one more time pretty quick here. So you open up here. You make a procedural train, you open it up, you go to the procedural tab right here, you right click, go to edit function, 
you play with these, what, get what you want out of these. And once you get what you want out of these, uh, add a blender node right here. It looks like a Y or a football goal sign. Uh, and then you add another fractal by clicking anywhere you want. Uh, click on the procedural fractal right, right here. Uh, you want, want to add another math node by clicking on this line that connects it from the seed and adding another math node, which is just this one with the X square next to it or x2 for those who don't know what the square sign is um, and then make this about the same or keep it at the default whichever whichever one you go for to make it how you want it to look you play with this what you like uh, I actually brought the smallest feature of this way up which gives me those smoother areas add a filter if you want to get a little bit more effect or better control over your environment uh, play with the blending and the mixing proportions here to get what you want uh, click OK Raise the resolution. Sometimes it's it's a good practice to raise the resolution to what to what where you can actually handle your machine your machine can handle to make it look good uh, to see what it looks like in here. You can actually lower it when you go out. You can lower it down to the 256 when you're done. I just keep it there because my system can handle it. So, uh, but after you get what you want, you go ahead and close this by clicking OK on both windows. OK and then OK, um, and then you come out here and you just do what you want with it do what you usually would do and it's that simple alright thank you for watching rate comment subscribe whatever you want to do thank you and have a nice day